I was actually gonna go to bed. I was in bed right now, and I just felt led by by seeking God's will, by seeking His face in this moment to share my testimony. And I've been meaning to do this for a while, but right now I just feel that it needs to be done. So here I am. So when I was about three years old, I remember talking to my parents about God and stuff. I was born and raised in a Christian family. Um, I did not understand, you know, God. You know, I just remember like being like three years old and just there was something in me like I looked around and I remember asking my mom or my dad like where did all of this come from so yeah no when I was four years old you know I was questioning all of this stuff uh about God and you know like what what's this thing that we supposedly believe that it's supposedly like the the answer and the right one and whatnot and you know I I questioned and I tried to get as much as I could out of my parents but of course you know they couldn't answer everything that I was really seeking deep down. So when I was four years old, I asked my father one question. I asked him, how can I know that I go to heaven when I die? And so he explained to me thoroughly the gospel. And this is the gospel that Jesus died on the cross so that our sins are forgiven. He rose from the dead. He defeated death. And if we ask to receive him in our hearts and we believe in him, we will be saved. He, he explained it really in depth and I was listening. I, like, I, I remember just breathing it in. And then he asked me if I wanted to receive Jesus in my heart. I said, yeah, like I meant it. I looked him in the eye and was like, yeah. And when I bowed my head and prayed this prayer that my father was telling me to repeat, before I knew it, when I was done praying that, I opened my eyes and immediately everything was different. And I said, amen. I remember I opened my eyes and I saw everything was just different in me. And what this was, was the Spirit of God, and I knew it. I knew God personally. I knew God in a way that wasn't just a mental concept or algorithm that you can just think about. It wasn't just a feeling. It was the living Spirit of God living inside of me at four years old. And at four years old, I had felt a purity, a joy, a love, and a security that I had never felt in my entire life. As innocent as a four-year-old could be, I always say this, as, isn't, eh, as innocent as a four-year-old can be, I never felt so innocent in my entire life. And I knew this was God. So when I, when, I, when I said amen to this prayer, received Jesus in my heart, I knew Jesus personally. I looked at my father and he looked at me and he said, you are now a Christian. And when he said that, everything clicked. I knew what it meant to be a Christian. I knew what it meant to follow Jesus. I knew what it meant to believe in God, his security over me, holding me. I knew he was with me for the rest of my life. And so that's literally my testimony, guys. So anyways, a lot of people talk about, you know, like they've never experienced God and they've sought God and stuff. And, you know, I can't give everyone the most personal, you know, straight up answer that they need for God to reveal themselves. But this is what I can say. It is a promise and God is not a liar. The all-knowing, all-perfect god of truth he is not a liar the truth cannot receive lies guys you're seeking truth right if you're outside of the truth how can you find truth you can only actually find truth by having faith in what is supposedly the truth but once you have your faith in that divine truth all of a sudden your faith has been become true that is the beginning of salvation that is the beginning of being born again in jesus christ and so with that being said god did promise in Jeremiah, that if, that whoever seeks him with all their heart will find him. And to emphasize that, um, I want to talk about Luke 11, because Luke 11 gives this little story. Jesus is talking about this, this analogy of this man who is, you know, he has guests over uh, at his house and it's late at night, but this man has nothing to give his guests to eat. So he goes over to his neighbors, knocks on the door, it's late at night, and he asks the neighbor, hey, can I get some loaves of bread so that I can like feed my guests? Uh, and and his neighbor is like dude like go away i'm in bed like the kids are asleep like we're, we're locked down we're, we're closed up for the night go away i don't have anything then jesus says this he says but because of his shameless persistence that man will end up giving him anything he asks for and then jesus says in the same way ask and you will receive seek and you will find knock and the door will be opened unto you for anyone who asks receives and seeks finds and anyone who knocks the door will open to you and so specifically like more than anything like i preach this about finding god more than anything seek it with shameless persistence god wants your whole heart as a matter of fact he wants the most vulnerable places of your heart the most broken parts of your soul it's when you're vulnerable and you really take that step out of faith 
and surrender your life to him. That's when he shows himself to you. I believe wholeheartedly that if you are honestly and rawly seeking God with all your heart, no strings attached, no gimmick, no what's in it for me kind of a thing, God will reveal himself to you. See, God is selfless. His love is selfless. His love is patient and kind. It does not envy or boast. It does not insist on its own way. And in the same way, when you really want God for who he is, honestly and rawly with all your heart, that's when he will reveal himself to you. It is a promise. And I know it happened to me when I was four years old and I can't ever forget about it. It is the one thing that my life is founded on. Over everything I've ever experienced, honestly, it doesn't even matter because without that, everything else would be gone. I would not be a Christian if it wasn't for that one experience. I would have left the church a long time ago if it wasn't for that one experience. That is literally what my faith is built upon. It's built upon 22 years ago when I was four years old and I found Jesus Christ literally as my Lord and Savior. I literally knew him personally since then. You know, a lot of people see Christians as just like these these spiritless, like religious people. And I understand that because there's a lot of them. And, you know, I think on one level or another, every Christian may deal with that at some point in their life. With that being said, there's a lot of people that preach the Bible in, you know, their own interpretation. And I think maybe all of us are honestly guilty with that. And, but what I know is that if you are reading the Bible correctly, in one way or another, it will point back to this gospel, the simple gospel that Jesus Christ died and rose again for us to save us, and that if we believe in him, we will have eternal life. I know I know another thing is that the people that really do find Jesus are the lowly, are the humble, are the broken. Jesus says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the gentle, the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied so there's this you know there's this theme about you know god actually turns his ear away he turns and ignores those who are proud those who are boastful those who are arrogant but he goes over and and leans in and listens to the humble and the lowly and so it's kind of in those broken states and you'll see this in a lot of people's testimonies it's when they're in a broken state and they know that they are are nothing without this God of Israel. They know that they need something. They know that they need a savior. And Jesus really only ministered to the people that knew that they were broken enough to know that they need a savior. And so those are the ones who are going to hear God the closest and the most. So yeah, Jesus, thank you for being here for all of this. And I have been talking about you like you're a third person that's like not here, but you are here with us. So I just pray right now in the name of Jesus that you touch whoever is watching this in the name of Jesus. In your name, Yeshua, and I thank you for the life you've given me. And I know you're not done in me yet. And I know that you've got a lot of things to show me. But God, right now, I just ask for your glory to penetrate the hearts of whoever is watching this in the name of Jesus. Because your spirit is so real. And I know it's your desire for everyone to know you this personally. In Jesus' name, no matter what happens, God, I pray, God, I pray for mercy. I pray for mercy on myself. I pray for mercy on the viewers, God. I pray for grace. I pray for that supernatural spirit, that supernatural love to come into this man's life right now in the name of Jesus, this woman's life right now in the name of Jesus. I speak that. I speak that into this camera, into the screen, into the viewer in the name of Jesus. Amen and hallelujah. Thank you, God, for calling us all back to you, God, because this is your desires. You don't want to hide from us, God. We just have to be willing to really go out of our way to know who you are, to seek you, to believe in you, God. And I just thank you, God. This is your will on earth as it is in heaven, God. As the disciples followed you, so are we called to follow you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Amen. And yeah, that's all I have to say. God is real. And I understand if, you know, you don't believe in God. I, I understand that on an emotional level. I understand that on a spiritual level. And I even understand that on a logical level. But I promise you guys, actually knowing God personally pays off. It is the most rewarding, most gratifying thing you could ever have in your entire life. Just you know the presence of God is, is is a high of its own. And I know it may be scary because I know that, you know, like being, you know, seeking after God means going to uncomfortable places in our hearts. And it might be a little scary at first, but once you really put your trust in God and, and call out to him and he responds and that spirit manifests, it's worth it, guys. It's completely worth it. It is the most amazing thing you'll ever feel. So don't be scared. Embrace it. In Jesus' name, amen.